Welcome back to Coding Shorts. I'm Sean. Today I want to talk about networking, but I'm not going to get all in the weeds. I found a need time to time to be able to handle networking in a way that is more robust for my applications. Luckily I found a library called Polyk that can really help me. I'm going to show you how it works. So here in Visual Studio, I have an example. It's all here in program.cs. There's not a lot to it. And I'm using this service that I use for some of my courses called arrest.me API. And this just has some endpoints that I can call to do certain things. And I have one for flakiness. And in fact, if I go ahead and execute this, you'll see that it returns a 500 sometimes. Sometimes OK. Sometimes OK. Sometimes bad, right? It's literally a flaky web service. And I'm going to use it as an example to go ahead and run this and see if we get successes. So if I run this, we can see we have, you know, even more failed than succeeded, though it should be about half and half on a larger scale. We'd like to improve that. I would like to have some way to retry this to see whether we can get a successful call out of it. And so we're going to use Poly to do that. And if I go ahead and go to Manage My NuGet Packages, though honestly I usually do this with the command line, but I want to make sure it's accessible to everybody, you're going to see this Poly package. There's some other Poly packages to help to do some other interesting things, but I'm going to use Poly by itself. So with it installed, I'm going to start by creating something they call a policy. And we want to retry our code more than once, right? Starts with a class called policy. I'm not creating a new one. This is actually a fluent syntax to allow me to do things. And I'm going to start by talking about handle and an exception. So let's say invalid operation exception. And so this is saying if I have something happen like this specific exception, or it could certainly be any old exception, then I want you to do something special. And in our case, I'm going to want to retry. And because this is going out over a network, I'm going to tell it to do it async. And all I need to do is give it a retry count. And in our case, I'm going to say three. And so how do we use this retry policy? We're actually going to call this inside of a Lambda. So we'll say retry policy dot exec async which is sort of the magic of what we're doing there. And we need to make an async lambda inside of it to actually run it. So we're not doing a lot of special stuff here. We're just saying, I have this policy. Let's go ahead and see if we can get it to be more successful. And of course, this is async, so we need to await this as well. Let's see if this changes how our project works. So you're seeing some success and some fail, but we don't know whether retries are happening. So let's actually come in here and instead of just retry async three, I'm going to use a Lambda here where I'm going to say this could be the exception, though I'm going to throw it away with an underscore. And here is the retry number. And all I'm going to do here is say right line retrying number. And so this is going to notify us if that actually ends up being the case. I think I need to make that a dollar sign. Otherwise, we're just spitting out that normal thing. And so here in the retry async, we're just passing in a lambda so that we can do something during those retries. So let's run this again. Let's see if we get any messages. Well, it doesn't look like retries are happening at all. We got a bunch of successes last time, but I think that was actually just luck. Now, why is that? This doesn't work because we're not actually throwing this in any way, right? This is an exception, and our code here that, that executes it is just actually returning a result. And instead of handling the exception, I'm going to actually handle a REST response, which is the response from a REST request from the REST Sharp library I'm using. Let me move over to the left. And this is going to contain a string if it's successful. And so we can then have a lambda here that will be executed to see whether it failed or not. And so here I'm going to be calling this an r dot 
is successful, I'm actually going to say not is successful because we want this to return true if it needs to be handled. So instead of saying is successful, what we're really going to be doing here is saying if it's not successful, I want you to retry. That's effectively the idea here. Of course, we're getting the underline because instead of just using hand with this type, we actually have to say handle result. And what that means is that what is returned from your Lambda here is what is being handled to handle result so that we can test that. And since we're getting that failure is successful, we should be able to actually see retries happen now. So you can see that we got some successes, so no retries are happening. And then this one took a couple, this one took a couple, and then this one took one. And so simply having retries because of the nature is going to work great here, right? But let's add one more wrinkle in here, and that is we might want to specify how long to wait between retries. And the difference there is, is actually to, instead of just to use retry, to say wait and retry. And in this case, I have another lambda to tell it how long to wait. And so this could certainly be time span from seconds. Let's not do days. And let's just say two seconds. Now the interesting part about this is this actually is a retry count. And we could say two to retry count in case we wanted to compute that, right? Both would work. And I'm going to change this to five just in case we find one that is being more obnoxious. This actually returns two items. And the first one is going to be the time of the recount. We're getting that retry number because the second because the second parameter here is actually how long it waited. And then there's actually a fourth one that we're also going to ignore. So we just we could get more information here to write it out. But I'm going to change this so that our retry number in this case is an int. You can see the second one is a time span. The first one is a delegate result. So that rest response in case we need to interrogate it. And the last one is this context object that you can look at at the policies context. So let's run it again. You can see with the weight that the retries are taking a little bit more time. And if we look at after the handle result, you'll see that there's a bunch of different things here. There's retries, but there's also circuit breakers and fallback and advanced circuit breaker. And there's even more stuff that's in there. But let's talk about circuit breakers for a minute, because this is a really common idea. We're going to do the same thing we did before. So I'm just going to do some editor inheritance, and I'm going to call this my breaker policy. And the idea of a circuit breaker is much like the circuit breaker in your house. So when something gets too much power in it, the breaker pops and doesn't let anything, any electricity through that circuit anymore until something is changed and you flip it over and you're fine. So by doing circuit breaker here, this is in some way the opposite of wait and or retry. Because the circuit breaker is saying, if you've tried to execute this more than twice and it's still failing, I'm going to stop you from executing it until something changes. And so the way we do this is we first say how many iterations until it fails. And I'm just going to say two because we want to see some failures. And then we're going to give it a time span of time to wait. And I'm just going to say 10 seconds. And here I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is I'm going to use a lambda with three elements that I'm all going to ignore. Because in this case, I just want to be able to see that the break has happened. Right, line, breaker, hit. And what is important here is there's another lambda that does some other work, but because of the overloads, I'm just going to include an empty lambda. This last one is to evaluate whether the breaker is successful or not. And we're not going to worry about that. And it's important to know that the circuit breaker is going to try two times and it's then going to return with the failure, right? And any subsequent calls are immediately going to fail until this 10 seconds is set up. And so all we need to do is really replace this breaker policy. And immediately we see an error 
by because there is no exact async. And that's because when we created the circuit breaker, we didn't tell it that the operation was actually async. So we have it working now. And if we get more than two failures, we'll see the breaker hit and then we'll see some failures happen. So hopefully we have enough failures to see that. Yep, it failed and someone allowed it to come in. We can see that it failed. And during that failure, the next call in is getting this broken circuit exception that contains the problem. And this is how the circuit breaker works correctly. There's You can use some advanced usage to change this, but you don't want to necessarily have those calls waiting. And so let's make a change to make this even more robust. Now we're saying wait 10 seconds. And so in, in fact, Let's go ahead and make these the same seconds because I want to create a policy here by saying policy wrap. And what are we going to wrap? We're going to wrap fact wrap async. We're going to wrap retry policy and breaker breaker policy and then just use the combined policy to really handle both. And the order of these are gonna matter because the retry policy is gonna come in first and only when that fails will the breaker policy happen. And I'm just gonna change the seconds to just one so we can do this pretty quickly. And so now let's run this. Let's see if we ever get a breaker. So we can see that the breaker was hit because we got two retries in a row. And so, this is purposefully what you want in these two cases. You want the retries, but you may also want to do circuit breaking. And what's interesting here is if we open up the website for Poly, you'll see that it has a bunch of different policies. Some are reactive and some are proactive. So we're going to see retry, retry forever, wait and retry, etc., circuit breaker, and fallback. And those are going to react to failures. You're also going to see some proactive functions like dealing with optimistic and pessimistic timeouts, bulkheads, rate limiting, using a cache or not using a cache, and even one that is a no-op when you want to be able to test certain things. So I certainly re recommend using Poly for transient fault handling in order to handle certain things to make your system more fault tolerant. You'd rather fail early and wait instead of hammering a server that may be doing a reboot or not being available or who knows your network may be down. So I'm going to be showing you some third party libraries coming up. It's my little version of Better Know a Framework from .NET Rocks. I'm going to take these libraries as I think they're useful and I'm going to be showing you a few of them in these coding shorts. If you have a favorite library you'd like me to investigate, please put it down in the comments. As usual, I'm going to want you to subscribe and or like and or share this video it really helps me get out there. We're approaching 10,000 subscribers, so I'm hoping we can reach that by the end of the year and each subscription helps. I'm also a consultant and I'm taking customers right now. I have some time in my schedule open up and so you can just visit sean.wildermuth.com. tells you all the different kinds of things I can do. Till next time, this has been Sean for Coding Shorts.